Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor, and welcome back to a brand new season of Ask This Old House, where once again, our experts are tirelessly working around your house, unless they're eating marshmallows. Thank you. Guys, okay, so what's going on today? Well, I'm actually going to show a homeowner how to install a microwave oven over her stove. No, I was talking about the campfire. This is not my story. Roger's doing this one. This fire pit comes in a kit, and I'm going to install it with a homeowner in just a few short hours. We're going to have a roaring fire. <laughs> not bad idea. Hey, don't touch that. Put that back. Put back. Back, back. We've been in the house about four years, and um, we love our backyard. We use it all the time. The dogs love it. We barbecue. And we've been using just a little um, portable fire pit. <laughs> As you can see, it's definitely seen better days. Ugh. We've gone through two portable fire pits in the time we lived in this house, and I'm really looking for something more permanent. But it was uh, a little overwhelming to think about tackling this on my own, so I'm glad I have Roger here to help. Kate, here's what we're going to build your fire pit out of. These are precast concrete block, and they have a curve on them. So when we put them together, they're going to make a circle. Well, inside that circle is going to sit the steel ring. Now, to get started, we have to dig a hole, and inside that hole, we're going to put some gravel and compact it, because that's going to give us a good base for these blocks to sit on. You ready to go to work? I am. Let's go. Now, it's important, before anyone starts building a fire pit, that they contact their local building department or fire marshal and check on the regulations in their particular city or town. Now, with our ring in place, what we're going to do is hold the shovel about three inches beyond the block, step down, Lift up a little and make a mark all the way around the outside of the ring. All right, now let's get the block out of the way. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is using a square shovel, I want you to take and slide it underneath the grass. And we're going to save as much of this grass as we can so that we can patch in around the fire pit when we're done. Got it? Now, you can see why we put the grass in the back. That allows us room to put this good topsoil in the front. And when we're done everything, it's going to make for easy cleanup. Kate, this light-colored soil that we're hitting here is subsoil. That's not good for growing in. So any of that we have to remove, we're going to put in a wheelbarrow and take it away. Now, these are the concrete blocks that we looked at earlier that we're going to build a fire pit out of. Now, our first block is going to sit right here. Our whole first course is going to be buried below grade. Why is that? That's going to give stability to the next three courses that we're going to put on top of it. Okay. Now, to give stability to this course, we're going to put pack in underneath it and tamp that so it's really hard. Now, if you look in the wheelbarrow there, that's our pack. It's made up of three-quarter inch stone and stone dust mixed together. And that'll pack hot as a rock and we'll have a great base to build on. Sounds good. Now, the one thing I noticed when we were digging that your subsoil here was clay. So I dug a hole in the middle. And I'm going to fill that hole with three-quarter inch stone. And what this is going to do is going to allow rainwater to drain right out of the pit so it won't flood. So I'm going to fill this with stone, and then we'll start with a pack. Now, Kate, if we didn't have good drainage in the pit, during a heavy rain, it could just fill up with water. And if it did that in the wintertime, it might make ice and even move some of the blocks. So that's why drainage is important. Dump that pack right in here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it about an inch or two thick, and then we're going to take the hand tamper and pack it down. All right, we're all set to tamp it down. We're going to have to put in several layers of pack because we can only compact it an inch or two at a time because that's all we can properly tamp with our hand tamp. Now the pack is perfect. It's four inches below the height of the grass and that's just what we want to set our block. Now we're going to use the ring as a guide to set the block. So we're going to put this right in the middle. All right. How does that look to you? Pretty good? Maybe a little this way. Okay. Now we're going to take the block and start leveling them out right around the ring. Would you give me like a half a scoop of that pack? I'm just going to use it for a setting bed for the first block. I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit. I'm going to take my first block. I'm going to put it in here tight up against our ring. And then using the rubber hammer, I'm going to set it down in place. And here's the key. We have to make sure that this block is level end to end 
and level across. All right, okay, take that block and put it right up against this one. Now this one's our key. We're gonna level off of this one. So tap that down a little. Now check it with your level and make sure it's leveled this way. How's it look? You're a little high, yeah? A little high. Tap it down a little more. Perfect. Okay. All set for the last one, Kate? All set. Drop that in. Bang it in tight. There you go. Perfect. Looks good. All right. Grab that side of the ring. Lift up and come with me. Now with our first course level, I'm just going to clean off the block. We're going to put down a little concrete block adhesive. I'm going to put down two bands on this side and a little on this side. Now I want you to put it down, but I want you to put it down so it spans that joint. So that's right in the middle. All right. Wiggle it a little bit. How's your front look? Okay. Looks good. All right. Well, grab another one. It's as easy as that. We'll work our way around. All right, the last block. Perfect fit. All right, let's drop the ring in. Perfect. Now we're gonna take and fill this up with three quarter inch stone up to the bottom of the ring. That's gonna protect the block from the fire. That looks pretty good, Kate. We're just taking shape it a little bit so that we have a low spot in the center. All right, now I think we should put the grass back in place. Take some of that nice topsoil we saved and put about an inch or two right in there. Fill it even a little more. One more for me. That's good, Kate. Work your way all the way around. I'm just gonna take pieces of grass and fill in the void. Can you put a little more soil behind me here, please? Well, it's not a fire pit without a fire. No, it's not. And we got one. Look at it. Doesn't it look great? Yeah. Thank you so much, Roger, for coming by. It was a pleasure working with you. We're going to have a lot of great nights out here by the fire. Maybe we'll even do some hot dogs tonight. Sounds good. I know. So, Roger, what comes with the kit? Everything I see here? The block and the steel. And what does it cost? Well, in this case, to build one the size we did with this home, it was a little over $500. Now, at the home center, I see that they sell curved blocks. So can I just buy a bunch of those, make a circle, and then not have to deal with the kit? Those are large blocks, Kevin. They're used to make curved wall or large diameter circles, maybe 8 or 10 feet across, way too big for a fire pit. So to make them small, you'd have to cut every one of them? Every one, and that's a lot of work. Okay. Now, this one also comes with a steel ring. The steel ring protects the block from the flame and the heat. If you didn't have a steel ring, sooner or later, that block would break down. Okay. And you can just simply put down the grill and cook away. <laughs> All right, boys, gather around. Let me tell you the story about the yellow thing. All right. Hey. A couple of clues. It's yellow. Yeah. Right? That's good. It's like a funnel hood type of thing. A foot. 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 <laughs> around the perimeter, it has some grommets. Mm -hmm. And then on this end, it's got a connection for a hose. Mm. What ah. is it? You got it? Got it. Doubt it. You ever hear of a plant hoodie? No. No. no I can't say I have. More. Usually, when you water, you water. Water goes everywhere. Mm. Oh. But you take this and place it over an individual plant, say, like a cactus? Well, I just happen to have one here. Oh, <laughs> it's not easy keeping that in my back pocket. Be careful. <laughs> Set it down. The hood goes right over there. You attach the hose and the water goes down just on the cap. I tell you, that is brilliant, being able to water exactly onto the plant that doesn't need any water. You got it. All right, talking about <laughs> conserving water, this is a tool that I use a lot. I do a lot of demo, and you know, my hair gets dirty. Yeah. And lots of times i got to be places, and I don't want to take a whole body shower. Just shampoo the yeah, head. So you're clean from here down. That's yeah, right. Yeah. So I connect the hose here. Yeah. All right, put it over my head. Oh. Turn on the water. Oh, so this right, just seals up. Seals up nice and right, tight. Water on. Okay, That's good. good. All right, shampoo my head. I need to come, come, you need a little conditioner? Yeah, you got any? Okay, let me put it in. Okay, all right, turn the water off. There you go. There. You oh, look great, bro. That's, that's a good look for you. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of the time we rounded the hog. I'm going to need a bigger bar, bigger bar, bigger bar. All right, two fish sticks. We'll split them. <laughs> and moist towelettes. All right. <laughs> what a sport. <laughs> right. I don't want to go on, but I feel obliged. I'll tell you what it is.
All right. <clears throat> it's actually if you have a plumbing leak. This <laughs> comes in handy. Watch what I do. Tommy, help me out here. All right. Imagine you've got, say, a pipe in the basement or whatever, and it okay. springs a leak, right? I'm imagining that. Well, yeah. you take this, and you find yourself, say, a bungee cord, oh, yeah. Yeah. and you actually hang it just underneath the leak. Oh, all all right. right. This catches the water, and then to the bottom of it, you attach a hose, and then you can run the hose to a drain or outside, and it buys you a lot of time. That is super. You would never need a plumber. Ever. <laughs> well, I'm going to need some tiger signs. Okay, Tommy, so our kitchen's just about done. All we have left is this microwave project. Right. Now, this microwave goes up over a stove, and it also doubles as an exhaust fan. Yeah, it has these intakes on top here. Right here. We tip it back. There's a couple of ports underneath here that are also intakes. Now, we have a couple of options on how we exhaust it. We can exhaust it up through the top if we wanted to go up through the roof, or we can exhaust it out the back if we're against an outside wall. Turn the fan on. We'll see how it works. Blows it right out. Now, we're going to use the outside wall. Now, we're to get started, we're going to mark some templates on the wall. Right. We've already had an electrician come out and run a line through the wall up to this outlet. Okay, that's good. Then all we have to do is drill a hole in the cabinet for the plug. And it doesn't matter that the electrician's made such a big hole because the microwave will hide it. Now, to get started, I put a couple of reference lines right here lining up with the underside of the cabinet on each side. And I will line up the top of the bracket to those lines. And we'll mount the microwave right on that bracket. That's right. Now, I want to center it right here. You want to hold that side for me? Right there. All right, now I'm going to mark right here. I'm going to drill a hole here. Another one right here. Okay, now we have to do is drill two holes. Using these two holes, I'm going to line up this template for marking the hole for the exhaust. stud to deal with, so we have to cut that out of our way. Because the stud is in the way of the exhaust, I have to cut it off. If I cut it off, I have to replace that structure with a header. To get in the wall to do that, I have to cut a bigger hole in the drywall. Alright, there's a joint in the drywall. I'm just going to cut the fiberglass tape. Okay, there's one. Okay, now I'm going to cut away some of this insulation. Now I use the oscillating multi-tool to cut the stud. Notice I'm cutting the stud higher than the hole. That's where I want to insert the header. With the reciprocating saw, I can cut off the bottom of the stud. cut the stud higher than the opening to accommodate for the thickness of the header. I've pre-installed some screws so I can screw into the adjacent studs. Now our head is in place and the bottom piece is called the plate and I'll put that in the same way. Let me show you what I have. Right here is where we're going to cut the hole for the fan to exhaust. I've installed a header and a plate, and I screwed both of those into the stud that I cut off. I screwed the header and the plate to the adjacent studs on both ends. I installed a jack stud on both ends, and I screwed those to the adjacent stud, and this carries the header above. Now, I also installed a piece of blocking right here, and that's where I can screw the bracket to hold the microwave. Now, I want to fill these voids in with insulation. All right, I'm going to take the insulation and put it in the hole, but pack it in there nicely, but not too firm. Insulation works better if it's not too tight. All right, now what we want to do is install a vapor barrier over the insulation. And that stops all that warm, moist air in the wintertime from condensing on the outside wall. Now, to cover up our work, I've cut a piece of plywood. And you notice I've cut an opening right here where our exhaust will go. Now, 
now we're ready to install the mounting bracket that's going to hold the microwave. I'm going to install it in the center of the cabinets. I want the top of the bracket to be even with the underside of the cabinet. And we'll just tack it with a small screw. Another one over here. Now I'll screw right into our blocking. We're going to cut the hole for the exhaust from the outside. But I'm going to mark for the hole from the inside. To do that, I'm going to drill a hole in each of the four corners. Okay, let's go outside. First thing I want to do is cut just the vinyl siding using a carborundum blade so I don't damage the vinyl siding. Then I'll cut the rest of the hole using a reciprocating saw. Now this outside damper will slide in the hole from the outside, but before I put it in, I want to put a little bit of insulation around the opening to help seal that. Okay, and now we're ready to mount the microwave onto the bracket. Now on the bottom of the bracket, there's actually these two tabs, and they'll go into two slots in the back of the microwave. Okay, now Lynn, I want you to go up on the ladder and push that plug up through the hole that I drilled. I'm going to tip it up. You pull the cord gently. All right, there you go. The last thing we do to attach the microwave so it won't tip forward are two screws to the bottom of the cabinet into the top of the microwave. Tighten them real tight. Now we're ready to put the vent hood into the opening, but before I do, I want to run a bead of caulking around the perimeter to make it watertight. Slide it in the opening. Just make sure it lines up inside, which it does nice. And screw it in place. All right, Lynn, let's see how we did. All right, let's try it out. Oh. Fan works. Not only do we have a fan, it has five seeds. Well, that's great. All right, so what are you going to cook? How about some tea? Tea sounds good. Yeah, maybe some popcorn? Tea and popcorn, I love it. And that is your new diet, Mr. Silva? It's my new diet, can you tell? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> so it's a story about venting the microwave, but it's actually really a story about restructuring that wall. Right. You know, you don't think of one stud in the wall as a big deal, but that's structure. Whenever you remove structure, you have to replace the mm -hmm. structure. So I showed you how to head it off. You never know what that one stud in the wall is carrying up above. It could be a joist resting right there, and over time that could settle, crack the ceiling. Right. Did you know that not everybody does it exactly right, like Mr. Silva? <laughs> no. Absolutely. I've seen occasion where people have actually cut the stud. A lot of times you look, and they might run the ductwork right around the stud, leaving the duct right in the middle, mm -hmm. the stud right in the middle, and that yeah. impedes airflow and leaves a nice big greasy stud right yeah, there. exactly. Now, Tom, could you have vented that microwave out the top and through the cabinet? I could have, but if you remember, that was a very small cabinet anyway. They didn't have a lot of storage. That meant that I would have eaten up even more of the storage space. I actually could have come right through the cabinet into the space above. Those cabinets didn't go all the way to the ceiling. That would have made it nice and easy to go right out the wall. But then I would have had to close that in, build a soften. Mm -hmm. A lot more work. Right. So a lot of right work, way. but you did it the right way. And we learned a lot along the way, so thank you. All right, well, we'd love to hear from you. So keep your letters and your emails coming. And until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Richard Thewitt. I'm Roger Cook. And I'm Tom Silver. For Ask This Old House. I'm going to put the tea on, Tommy right, boy. Let's get that popcorn going. <laughs>
If you have a question about your house or a home improvement tip you'd like to share, please let us know. Visit our website at pbs.org for expert advice, step-by-step -step videos, and much more. This old house magazine, the companion to the television series, provides advice from our experts that you've come to know. You can use your credit card to order 10 monthly issues for $10 by calling 1-800-221-5900.